you know, this became a very ideological battle. It became a very partisan battle. And <clears throat> politics, uh, I think, ended up trumping practical common sense. All right, end of the day, what are we going to have? We're going to have six hours of wonderful healthcare wonkery aired on, aired on C-SPAN. You really don't think they can bring anything to a consensus a center, not even a, a small crucible group of ideas? Will you get a, an agreement? No, I mean, you saw it this morning when Republicans began with Lamar Alexander and the others saying, look, we want you to start over. We have to start by taking the current bill and putting it on the shelf and starting from a clean sheet of paper. And more to the point, it isn't that your big bill is wrong, big bill, but we don't believe Congress should be doing big bills at all. Well, I want to ask you about that because we know there's been talk of a plan B, which is a much pared down administration approach too. You don't think that's the viable option at the end of the day? I don't really. I think this Plan B thing, which was a Wall Street Journal story today, Plan B has been around for a long time. There have been at least two separate occasions going back to August when the administration began thinking about pairing back. At this point in the process, I think that if this bill, the Senate bill, goes down, nothing comes back out of it because there is no energy in Congress or time to go back to the beginning. These guys are out of here in three months to campaign for re-election. I mean, we're done in a couple months with what Congress can really do this year. Watching the president, I'm trying to figure out how he gains any advantage from this meeting then. In the weeks leading up to this, there was a real chaos on the Democratic side. Nobody knew what they were doing, what the process had become. Suddenly, when Obama announced this meeting, everybody watched the meeting. Would the Republicans come? Would Obama have a bill? Would the Democrats come? Who would be on the guest list? So it gave all of us in the press something else to look at while Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi sort of kept trying to get their ducks in the row. You think they're really going to try for that? They're going to try oh, to ram it through. Is it ramming it through to go on the 51 vote thing? Uh, Julie Robner at NPR had a great piece yesterday where she looked at the recent history of health care legislation. And what she found was virtually every piece of legislation on health care that's passed in the last 20 years has been in reconciliation. COBRA, the R in COBRA stands right. for reconciliation. Fine. But you have to tell me something I cannot understand. Because everybody you talk to in and out of the administration really says at the end of the day, the biggest driver of health care costs is fee for service, which is to say we go into our doctor and they order a lot of tests and a lot of scans. And what are the figures on what percentage of medicine and procedures we get that are unnecessary? Is it something like one out of four? The problem is doctors are very popular. So too are fairly hospitals and other pieces of it that aren't insurers. So we have had a political discussion that focused on insurers and had solutions relating to insurers right. when a lot of the cost is with doctors. But frankly, if the administration took on doctors, they'd be out of office in two years. You think we'll have any change in health care in this country by the time we get to, well, June, you say, is the, pretty much the end? So right now in the Internet betting market in trade, it's at 41 percent to pass by June. I think that's not a bad estimate. Oh. I'd say odds are, you know, around even. Right now, Democrats realize they can't let this fail, but at the same time, they don't quite, I think, have the path yet to make it go forward. And Republicans realize they can't let this go forward, but they still don't quite have the votes to make it fail. Uh, but I do think that we have a, a broader problem here. One thing I always thought about the death panels hubbub earlier this year, forgetting obviously that wasn't true in the bill, but the idea that anybody could even for a second entertain the idea that these folks down the street here in Washington who are, you know, they, they need to get votes voted back into re-election would be putting death panels into it. It was evidence of such profound mistrust of our neighbors and our representatives that you're looking at something much more corrosive to not only a solution to health care, but anything else. I love talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bye.